Let's take a few minutes and talk a little bit more in depth about pronation. Some pronation is going to be necessary for normal gait to occur. It is one of the three shock absorption mechanisms which occurs during the gait cycle. Pronation is the action of dorsiflexion of the foot, eversion, and abduction of the foot. It occurs from the time the heel hits the ground at initial contact until about mid stance during a normal gait cycle. It allows the foot to be a mobile adapter for normal gait to accommodate to uneven surfaces. Supination is the exact opposite of pronation. It is the motion of plantar flexion, inversion, and adduction, and we can think of supination as the position that the foot's in when it first hits the ground, and the position that it's in right before the foot leaves the ground. It makes the foot into a rigid lever. As the heel first hits the ground, the friction between the heel and the ground becomes great enough such that the talus slides anteriorly on the calcaneus on its little shelf called the sustentaculum tali, and that allows the talus to plantar flex, invert, and adduct. This places the transverse tarsal joint, um, or the talonavicular joint, as well as the calcaneocuboid joint axes parallel, which allows the foot to become more mobile. As the talus internally rotates and adducts, the lower extremity will follow it, and it will internally rotate and adduct, as will the hip. This causes a relative anterior nutation motion of the pelvis, which occurs with some flattening of the foot at the same time. Supination is the opposite. It's when the foot becomes a rigid lever, and this is due to the calcaneocuboid locking mechanism, largely due to the action of the pronius longus tendon, which would begin in the lateral aspect of the foot, come around, and insert at the base of the first ray. Supination will be initiated at mid-stance as the opposite leg goes into swing phase. When we view pronation or supination, we need to consider is this occurring at the rear foot, midfoot, or the forefoot? And is it occurring at the same amount on either side or more on one side than the other? Pronatory increases on one side versus the other makes that leg relatively shorter than the opposite side, which will change pelvic mechanics and mechanics of the knee and hip more north of what's going on at the foot. Another important concept to remember is that pronation will often increase, not always, but often, on the side of the longer leg with relative supination of the shorter side. This can occur with anatomical or functional leg length efficiencies and cr can create disparities or clockwise, counterclockwise rotations within the pelvis as well as a relative windswept type biomechanics of the foot where one foot is more pronated than the opposite side.